Tech Studios, uh, part two of our interview with Brendan Heinz. Um, today we're going to talk about a very, very nerdy subject. Well, high res nerdy. wasn't nerdy enough. <laughs> <laughs> Deeper into the realm. Deeper hole. into yeah. the in the realm of recording. Uh, we're going to talk about dithering, and it's something that intrigues me uh, because, if simply put, we're adding noise to lower the noise floor, or Am I wrong? Uh, to reduce distortions reduce in some distortions. kind. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're, you're yeah. adding noise to make things sound better. Yeah. Which is Practically weird to say. Yeah. 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 And well, I tried to make a video about it and then I thought, oh my God, no, this, <laughs> this is, is too much. This is too much. <laughs> it's actually quite hard. So hmm. I thought, let's just ask the pro uh, about what dithering is. Are there any kinds of dithering? Uh, do you need dithering? especially with high res. Uh, so let's start first, what is dithering? Yeah, so it, it, it all comes down to quantization. Um, if you have a certain amount of bits to describe the amplitude of a waveform. Yeah, 16, um, 24, 32. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So in, in 16 bits, you have about 65,000 possible values yeah. to, to store. Um, it's just binary mathematics yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just like that yeah. um i think uh 24 bits is something like 60 million different values if i'm Around, not mistaken yeah so yeah. that's the, the ballpark figure so yeah. um of course you don't have endless resolution in that no so what happens if you if you near um uh the the, the zero um in, in terms of amplitude um if, if you have a waveform, sometimes it's it's uh, for example, it's like half a bit, let's yeah, say, um, yeah. in 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 terms of amplitude. It's in between, exactly. But yeah. it can't be in between. No. So sometimes it's going to be rounded down to yeah. zero, and sometimes it's going to be rounded up to one. Yeah. Um, in which case you get some nasty distortion and edges and stuff like that. Is that some sort of intersampling clipping, or is that something it's different? Quantization noise. As quantization it's noise. Quantization errors. Yeah. Um, All right. And so what is a really easy way to get rid of that is to just like randomly add ones and zeros to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. or, or, you know, to, to make it just randomly flip upside down between zero and one, mm -hmm. very, very simply put. Yeah. Um, to make sure that sometimes it rounds down to zero, sometimes it rounds uh, up to one. And, and then for our perception, there is no quantization distortion. Yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. Because um, we, we, we can grab random It's noise. less jagged. Um, exactly. Even though there's still noise, it's it's less um, less blocky, less okay. digital, so yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, there is, of course, much more nuance to it, to it than that. But that's that's the gist of it. Yeah. Um, so when you dither, you also have the choice of, of doing noise shaping to it. Um, so noise shaping has to do with the fact that... Um, Z simply put, if you if you put noise on something, your ears might be able to hear it. Yeah. Even that 16 bits, it's it's in this very low register, but it it it's it's some kind of noise. Well, so. Where are we talking about? The, where is the noise floor, or can you choose where the noise floor is? Um. So it it, it depends on what your your bit depth is that yeah. you go to. Uh, but it's always on the LSB, the least significant bit. So okay. the lowest bit. Um, is is what this quantization error uh, rounds up okay. to. Okay, okay, okay. It's um, really, really deep really down in the deep master. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, you know, because it's it's a noise floor, it it can push things up and down as well. So you do hear the different kinds of dithering that there are, and there are quite many. Yeah. Um, in your mix as well. So is there a quality difference between the the sorts of dither? That's a good question. There's a sound difference. Yeah. Um, and of course, you, you have normal dithering, and then some plugins also offer anti alias uh, yeah. dithering, um, which is a whole other thing in, its, in itself. Um, you know, we, we go deep into the rabbit hole with this. You, you warned us already. Yeah. Um, doesn't but, matter. <laughs> it doesn't. No. <laughs> um, but so for, for different kind of. of genres of music you'd say or, or different kinds of, of music you would use different kind of dithers and and we 
just generally just try out what we think sounds best with what we do because in the end it's it's a creative kind of thing that you do yeah um you know even mastering itself is yeah but sometimes that minor difference is just a dot on the eyes like yeah, yeah this yeah. is it but I, I, i'm thinking about compression um and i'm I, i'm not a mastering engineer people so don't shoot me if this is completely bizarre and stupid but i we we both listen to rock and progressive rock and metal and uh, I, 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 yeah. we kind of like the same music so that that was cool uh, but with metal you need compression otherwise it just sounds too polished and, yeah and not metally yeah yeah um and not just simply because of that but you need this this um this so-called wall of sound yeah, wall right of sound yeah you yeah, need you, it you, you need the physical energy being pushed out of your speakers exactly. as much as possible and, yeah and, 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 and that's why I always think a live concert with Muse or Tool or whatever, you can't reproduce it in the, in the living room. Your system just doesn't have the balls to mm -hmm. do that. But if you compress that much, what's the influence of dithering then? Is it bigger or is it smaller? Or is compression and dithering two completely different they are, they are different, but of course they're they're both part of the whole mastering process. Yeah. Um, you know, compression you can also use during recording and mixing as well. So it's, yeah, it's even. But I'm, I'm thinking if you compress a lot, you also raise the noise. Yeah, but dithering is something you do all the way at the end of the, of the, the end. chain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ah. So you first you do all of your calculations, and then right before you say, okay, let's now go down from from 32 or 24 bits down to something. That's when you dither. Okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't get that. So okay. That's that's that's. So that's that's how you use that. Yeah. I can imagine that for less um, less dynamic music, and especially music like metal that already has a lot it's of not, distortion to yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the name of the game, right? Um, so probably your uh, um, your your quantization errors should become a bit less noticeable, oh, yes. of course, than. <laughs> I wouldn't say like a, a very dynamic piece of, of, of Wagner or opera or yeah. something like yeah. that. Um, but in, in, in some kind of regard, it always matters something. Yeah. Um, I just say it's, it's less obvious to certain genres than, than it is to ours. Okay. Ours, others. Others, yeah. yeah. Um, with DSD, differing is not possible then. Um, I mean, dithering slash noise. I mean, noise shaping is part of the whole DSD process um, uh -huh. as well. It is. DSD is definitely not my um, my my expertise, uh, nor is it really my my own personal cup of tea. So mm -hmm. definitely not. Yeah, because I thought it's one bit. So there's not it much. It is. It is one bit, but um, the way that you get down to one bit um, mm -hmm. is is has got to do with all of these quantization errors and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Like any time you do record in a, in, a, in a lower bit rate or you go down in bit rate, um, there is some kind of noise shaping slash dithering involved. Ah. And for DSD, it's very, very important. Okay. I know there are a couple of different ways about go, uh, uh, going that, but I'm definitely not an expert on that. I'm quite much a PCM kind of guy. Uh, we do sell DSD in our web shop because I know yeah. that a lot of people enjoy it. Um, some DACs also prefer DSD in the sense that they just sound better on DSD. Yeah. Uh, which is why we support yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's weird. Some DACs do really sound better in DSD. Mm. It's, it's, uh, I think it just really depends on what kind of topology the, the DACs. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. It's, all right. So it, it was quite technical. I'm not sure how long this interview is. So. But I think we got an answer on what dithering is, mm -hmm. what it does, and uh, that there are multiple types and that they sound different. I'm really curious about how they sound different. Maybe if all goes well, we can put in some samples to, to make sure. it more interesting and to let you guys hear what it does. I've never heard a difference in dithering, so I'm really curious. You're going to get the experience I'm, of I'm your lifetime. I'm going to get the experience yeah. this time. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, in-depth nerdy You're interview welcome. and uh well there's a part three about the recording process what do you work. work with and what is the gear you always have with you thank All you of this. <laughs> okay see you next time thank you for watching <laughs>